Ah oh, man, I just came outside, but it's broad daylight. It's actually drizzling. And look at this guy. What's up, dude? What's up? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna work on this guy today. Um, yeah, so I need to remove the head on this one. Cylinder head. Um, I haven't done anything to it. The spark plug wires are just removed and the uh, plugs are just uh, loose. I was checking the compression on this one. So cylinder number two is low. It has uh, about 30 PSI. While the other ones make about um, 170, 175, something like that. Um, so previously I had already replaced the um, timing belt on this side. I installed the cam seal, the crank seal, the main seal on the bottom. Um, but yeah, I need to remove a lot of this stuff, you know. So uh, today's the day that we start working on it. I think I have uh, all the parts that I'll need. Um, yep, yeah, so... Hopefully this should be a few hours worth, not a, a few days, bro. All right, so I have a variation of sockets here between eight, 10, 12. Ah. Okay, so at this moment, I took off the turbo and the manifold. Um, unplugged the drain. I still kept the water lines hooked up to the turbo and the oil feed hooked up to the turbo. So, this is a turbo, the GT36, uh, 3582. It's a 66 millimeter turbo, I think. But, um, so yeah, so here's the head. Spark plugs are loose, like I said. Um, I'm going to take off the valve cover. Alright, so I just removed the head bolts and man do they stink. <laughs> like old ass oil. Burnt. I don't know what it smells like. They, they smell disgusting. Uh, these are a size 10 but they're a 12 point uh, socket. I mean 12 point head. Right, let's see what else I need to remove because... This is the first time I'm disassembling this. I'm going to see if I can lift the head and then just pull it forward. Because the studs for the intake are still there and I can't take this one out. So. Okay. Okay. Alright guys, so check this out. Um, engine block. This piston or this cylinder is the one that uh, had low PSI at about 30 PSI. These were averaging about 170, 175. Um, so at the bottom I do see those little marks right there. And on this side there's a slight mark. I'll zoom in just a little bit closer. So those marks right there. The thing is the back side is the intake side so it has two valves on this side and only one valve for the exhaust so I don't see a mark on the exhaust side I see those but I see this right here and that looks like a mark as well whoops not too much that right there looks like a mark like if it hit the valve not this side not the exhaust number three um, no marks Oh good, well, there's that. But the exhaust valve doesn't even reach that side. And then this one, no marks. Uh, yeah, just a s indentation, but I think that's part of the part of the piston, I'm not sure. So this was the one that was wrong, you know, that had a low compression. So I come over here, and uh, just to be sure, I took off the... Uh, you know, rocker guide or whatever, uh, lifter guide, and the cam is just spinning freely. So that means that all the valves 
should just close uh, all the way. There's nothing holding them open. And uh, this one and these two are for the cylinder that I'm working on. Flip this guy over and I'm looking at all the valves and they're all properly seated. Like they're properly seated all the way around. Uh, right now I'll put the spark plug and fill this up with gasoline, see if it goes through. I checked these valves, uh, supposedly this, one of these is the one that hit and my phone just overheated, so bye. Okay, so here's the cylinder head. I took off one of the valves um, from that damaged cylinder. Um, <clears throat> so here it is, look. All right, so I'm just gonna set it right there. Now I'm gonna rotate it and look at the the movement on the stem. All right. Yeah. Well, turns out this one is bent. Here's a new valve, and the brand of these are DNJ. Um, so there's two intake valves and one exhaust valve. They're all different sizes. I think uh, I'm not sure about the sizes. I think one is 28 millimeter, one is 31, and the other one is um, I don't know, a little bit bigger. But three different sizes. The one that got bent. Distributors plugged in, spark plugs, they're all good. This crank sensor, I think, that's plugged in. Fuel injectors are plugged in, everything's tight, the fuel rail. Um, I put the turbo, you know, everything's tight. So let's go ahead and just crank it. See what it does. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> just uh <laughs> the oil was all over the place let me put the valve cover 
Okay, then let's go ahead and continue round two. and then it's 5 and then it's 10 and it's between the 10 and the other mark the very very top one so it's at about 12 degrees before the top is in it this guy always comes around I should name him I should name this guy uh, well actually the roadrunner from Looney Tunes uh, with the Wiley Coyote and the roadrunner he's just called roadrunner <laughs> But uh, yeah, he always stops by and uh, he likes watching my progress here, whatever I'm doing, painting, mechanicking, or uh, is that a word, mechanicking? And uh, as a roadrunner, do the noise. Brr, brr. I don't know how he does that. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Yeah? Come on, bro, do something. Yeah, he doesn't want to give me some content, something to go viral. Alright guys, so that is it for the car. Right now, everything is working just great. No strange noises, like the engine sounds very healthy. I was worried for sure that it was going to be it for my car. Um, right here, locally, you don't see these cars. Not in a junkyard, like nowhere near. Uh, it's not that it's like a highly desired car or whatever. It's just that it's just so old. It wasn't even popular at the time. It's not even popular now. Uh, so it's rare to find some of these and to get parts from. Like so, for sure, I thought you know all the work that I've done throughout the years, you know, is just gonna come to a halt, or I was gonna have to do some type of engine swap, or I'm not sure what I was gonna do, but. Um, as I checked on some of the auto parts store and some of the websites, this is supposed to be an interference engine. So I guess my luck was just that I was barely coming out of my driveway and the car was idling. Um, I was, you know, barely shifting or whatever. So not, not the driveway, just like from the exit of, you know, whatever. But I was barely like shifting. The engine was just at idle when I heard that noise. And, um... From there, like I didn't really try to do anything else, um, but yeah, it turns out one of the valves was bent. Luckily, I guess I lucked out. You know, like it was, I guess it was meant to be. This guy, this guy lives to see another day, and uh, which is cool because uh, I've got something going on for this guy. So I've got something else coming up that I already spoke with uh, Jeff from Jeff Bergman from Eye Candy Pigments. And, um, you know, we'll, we're trying to see if uh, I can make it to Maker of the Month for October. Uh, the car is not ready, so I do want to give it a paint job. Uh, something decent, like not, you know, like this one was in a budget using spray cans and, you know, like very minimal pigments. And it was mostly just to uh, teach you guys on, you know, some things and as well as learning. But... Um, me personally, I've learned so much with the pigments, so interference pigments or color shift pigments, the quantity, and I've learned so much. So I want to do another paint job on this one, but base, inner coat with pigments, because this was just pigments inside the clear coat. Uh, so, you know, like I said, inner coat with pigments or just, just, you know, some cool design, maybe the crystallization with urea, 
I'm not exactly sure, but I do want to do something great. That way I can have something to show for, you know, make sure that uh, Jeff uh, can see something and, uh, you know, something we've created using his pigments. So that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, leave you guys his comments down below. You know, I think I looked out with this car. Lab Rat lives to see another day. And, uh, you know, thanks all of you guys for watching the video, supporting my channel. And uh, I think that's, that's going to be it. I hope to see you guys in the next video. We'll see what happens. Um, I think uh, there's a viewer, Tony, that has a Honda Fit, Orange Blaze or something. So me and Jeff talked about it. So we're going to do some test panels uh, just to sh show him something. Uh, but uh, I've got some paint videos, pearls or interference pigments over silver. I know some of you guys have uh, requested those. So it's time, it's time. I've just had so many things to do, sponsors or uh, just taking care of this one or the Tahoe that I did an oil pump. And it's just, I've been busy, I've been busy. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope to see you on the next video. Peace out.